Hello, and welcome to the Powerhouse Church of God in Christ. I'm Odell Riley, the senior pastor here with our First Lady, Lafrida Riley. Hello, and welcome to this week's Sunday School Highlights. Hey Amen. This week, we're going to be talking about Christ's love for the church. This is one of those lessons for the family. So get your Bibles, your Sunday School books. Let's get ready to study. Okay, so we ready to get, before we dive into the lesson, it's the uh, last, I guess technically it's the, uh, it's the beginning of 2023. Yes, by the time you see this, it may be <laughs> 2023. <laughs> so hopefully you've had a great uh, Christmas season. Um, we had a great Christmas season, got to be around uh, family quite a bit, enjoyed the family, enjoyed the fellowship, um, got to eat. Just about whatever you wanted to eat. Yep. We too much. And just about whatever we wanted to eat this holiday season. Um, and get prepared for the fast to uh, lose some of that excess weight. Maybe yeah. we put on, we put on, I put on, I should say, I put on as part of the holidays. So it's always a bittersweet season. Mm -hmm. uh, sweet in that you're going to eat a bunch of sweets. And I bitter in knowing that a fast is coming on the heels of it. And going into this fast, remember to eat healthy. Remember to eat healthy. We're, we're, yet, we're yet in a pandemic, people. We're yet in a pan pandemic. People are sick around the world. People yeah. are getting sick with COVID around the world. Flu, uh, RSV. Uh, Sinus else. issues. Yeah, 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 all kinds of stuff that's going on. So take care of yourself. Even during the fast, eat healthy. If you can, eat healthy. And if you take your supplements or whatever, continue to do that, you know. Uh, you know, we don't have to go out and get the chewable ones with all the sugar in it, but <laughs> do something. They taste better, though. They taste better. They do taste better. But do something to make sure you remain healthy. We don't want to get sick as a result of the fast. This is about humbling our flesh. You know, and, and this, the interesting thing about the uh, fast season is, is that it does, uh, for me, it forces a reset. Mm -hmm. You know, even though, you know, we'll fast, uh, you know, first part of the year. Uh, pretty seriously, you know, at the beginning of the year, we'll do it throughout the year, uh, but it forces you at least an annual reset. Mm -hmm. uh, and typically, you know, we get some value out of that, not just spiritually, but physically as well, right? Mm -hmm. That you may, you become more cognizant, more conscious of things that you frankly putting in your bodies that, that you're not. Unfortunately for me, by the time we get to December, I don't, I don't fell off the wagon pretty good. And so I need to <laughs> January to come around and get me back on the wagon. And, and we, we may all find that. We may all find it beneficial. Uh, for those who are going on the Daniel Fast, you know, uh, usually you usually come out after about day three or day four, your clearing has um, begin to clear, your mm -hmm. thinking has begun to clear up some and any issues you were having, maybe sinus issues and that sort of thing, uh, that's begin to uh, clear up some. So. That's good. Now, now the Cornelius fast, Cornelius fast, and some people have to do that, the mm -hmm. 15 hour. So most people go on at midnight and come off at three. Do what works for you. Right, do right. what works for you. Again, this is not about abusing yourself. This is about a discipline, a discipline, discipline, humbling our souls before the Lord. So different people have different jobs mm -hmm. and they have different demands, that sort of thing. So, so you know, do what works. And probably want to, if you do the clean, is make sure that you consume in water and things of that nature. So you, to your point, you don't abuse your body. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of us are struggling and we don't consume enough water. Uh, so we don't want, to, don't want to be depriving it of food and water as well, which may lead to other issues that we have mm -hmm. to deal with. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the water, a lot of times getting that, they tell you to divide your weight in half. I think this is how it goes. Divide your weight in half, and then consume that sort of, that amount of water in ounces. <laughs> so, so if you happen to weigh, <laughs> if you happen to weigh uh. 150 pounds, that means 75 ounces. But then you have you have other demands on. Just say if uh, if expecting mothers, I think they have 100 ounces that they do, and maybe those who um, are haven't yet weaned their children. Their, their child and babies, they're yet at 100 ounces, I think. Well, if I did that math for me, I'd have to drink a lot of water. So uh, 
it, yeah, figure your formula, find <laughs> out what, what works for you. Okay, so today's lesson, we're getting into, we're getting into some, I don't know if they're sensitive, I guess they're sensitive scriptures. Well, we're still in the book of Ephesians. You know, we're still in the book of Ephesians. We're still Coming in the book to the of, end of it. Yes, and getting into those relationships, mm -hmm. how we're supposed to manage relationships. For, uh, I remember when my, my dad used to uh, give a scripture for whatever reason, you know, he'd give a scripture and it was Jesus wept. <laughs> but I think the scriptures we're going to go over today are probably some of the scriptures that husbands probably learn when they first get married. Well, the Bible truth says family <laughs> members should love and care for one another just as Christ loves and cares for the church. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, as you said, uh, people find scriptures that typically advance their positions or their causes. Uh, but, you know, you can't forget about the whole context by which this was written. Right. 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 And, and even though it does go into a lot of dialogue rel relating to families, the greater issue. And I tell people all the time, whatever you read, wherever you read, you should always read Christ in the story. And whenever you read this lesson, I think it starts, what, what verse does it start with? The it starts with the 21st verse. 21st mm -hmm. verse? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm surprised it doesn't start with about the 18th verse. I'm surprised it doesn't start there because this, uh, whenever you read the entire book of, of Ephesians, you know, you, you uh, get the feel of it and what the uh, author is doing here. But whenever you read, um, you don't, we don't want to take anything out of context. So the 20, the 18th verse really starts this with, uh, want us to be sober, not just not just physically so, but wants us to be sober in our relationships, be uh, mature in our relationships, mature Christians in our relationships. So if you don't mind, let me read Ephesians 5, 18. And I think you can do that, but I think you got to go back to the 17. I think 17? it helps set the stage for this okay. whole conversation. Okay. And uh, then we'll, we'll read the 17 through the 20th, you said we start 21st, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the 20th, and then we'll go into the rest of what we're setting up okay. for. All right, and the, what you want, King James Version? No, let's read, right. read, read New International, something. Uh, New International. Do you have that? I'll have to. Uh, no. All right. I'll, I got the Amplified. I have it. The Amplified says, therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. And then the 18th verse says, and you want me to read those? Yes. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is the bockery, but ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. And reference is Proverbs 23 and 20, 19 verse says, speak out to one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, offering praise with voices and instruments and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. And at times and at all times and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, the father, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. OK. So I do have NIV. I went through the 21st. I think you were telling me to stop at the 20th. Uh, no, that's fine. Okay. But going all the way back to the 8th verse. 8th verse. 8th verse? For you were once darkness. Now this is Paul talking to primarily mm. a Gentile church okay. mm -hmm. who've been converted uh, to Christianity. For you were once in darkness, but now you're light. You are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deed of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention the disobedient, what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper, arise from the dead, mm -hmm. and Christ will shine on you. The 15th verse says, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most out of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord, 
Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with, with psalms, hymns, and songs, songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so to me, this really sets the stage for sober living. So not walk as fools, walk as wise. Because what you have, you have a lot of cultural things just coming into play. You have uh, Gentiles now who uh, are becoming uh, mainstream into Christianity or have already become mainstream into Christianity. You have the Jews who live a certain way mm -hmm. by their customs. You have the Jews who the women can't even go in certain places. They're the temple based on their custom. Um, then you have the Gentiles now that are part of this. And, and Christianity has kind of leveled the playing ground. There's no more Jew, no more you know, uh, Gentile, no more barbarian, no more Greek, no more male, no more female. So you have none of that that sways your relationship with God, but you still have the culture that you're dealing with. So Christianity didn't come to uh, put everybody on uh, edge with one another. It didn't come to uh, start a fight and that sort of thing. Christianity came as part of the fulfillment or as the fulfillment of reconciling men back to to God. You know, I was reading, uh, I think, of the commentary, and it talked about one of the reasons why uh, Paul addressed this was that uh, the Christian movement, there was concerns among Judaism uh, and some of the religious believers that this Christian movement was going to disrupt the entire culture, if you will, right. or uh, uh, chemistry of the family. And so, as you talked about when you said no more Greek, no more, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gentile, when you eliminated all of that stuff, then people say, well, everything is, is, is equal and you're going to mess up the formula. Mm -hmm. You know, the formula in this culture is set. And, and every, most of the people in the culture understand what the formula is, mm -hmm. how things work. If you, comes in, if you come in and move one of those things, then the outcome is unpredictable. Right. And, right. and we don't know how to manage that. Right. So Paul was addressing that as part of this letter to try to put those things in context. Because from a religious standpoint, no one probably would have argued with any of those points. Mm -hmm. And so what he did was to say, even though this movement is coming, we're not removing any of the foundational issues by which mm -hmm. it exists. We're adding on something to enhance, not to tear down. Right, right. And one of the things that you have is, even when Jesus was walking the earth and uh, they inquired, to, inquired um, about taxes mm -hmm. to him, and he paid the taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, it was not that the government ruled Jesus because we know he's Lord over absolutely everything, but he yet recognized the customs and the system that was in place. And if we're not careful, we'll, get, we'll become so distracted by um, things that we'll lose sight on the most important thing. The most, and we, ha we have to keep the main thing the main right, thing. Right. And at this point, this is infusing the culture with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you know, him being the Messiah, him being the way to salvation, him being the, you know, redeeming us, him having the ability to redeem us. You know, it goes back to when he, when he talked about he didn't come to destroy the law, mm -hmm. but he came to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. You know, again, a lot of times people read into this and they want to take the word and eliminate the foundation mm -hmm. and pile it on top of it. And what the word really does is it enhances, reinforces a foundation. Right. And then it builds on top of it. That's the power of it, right? Mm -hmm. To reinforce a solid foundation because it's part of the foundation and then help build on top of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's look at our lesson aim and all that. Our lesson stuff. aim is that we will compare Christ's love for the church with the relationship among family members. We will appreciate Christ's sacrifice to show love and care for the church and accept responsibility for showing love in the family as Christ demonstrated love for the church. Mm. So we compare, appreciate, and we accept. All right. The accepting part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the aim is by the end of the lesson, we will compare Christ's love 
for the church as uh, I just read. Okay. All right. So, do, should we take a break here or uh, go ahead? Sure, we can take a break. All right. We'll be right back. How great is thy God? Sing with me. How great is thy God? All will see it. How great is thy God? Everybody again, we sing. How great, how great is thy God? Oh, 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 how great is thy God? All will see, all will see. How great, how great is thy God? We lift our hands to you, Lord, and we praise your name. How great is thy God? How great. It's our God, sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, we'll see just how great. It's our God. One more time we say it together. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me, sing with me. How great. It's our God, all we see, all we see, how great is God, how great is our God, hallelujah, see your name, God, you're the name above all names, you're the name above all names, and you're worthy, Lord, yes, Lord, you are, and our hearts sing, sing just how great is our God. Yep, we are back. So we are getting ready to dive into the scripture. Uh, let me just say that the Bible application says that we, to, we are to know that we are to respect and love each one of our family members. Okay. Love and respect. And, and whenever we get, whenever we understand that, uh, the whole family dynamics based on, uh, you know, the order of God, no doubt, but love and respect, then that makes it, it makes things a lot easier. Um, well, it's a, it's, it's a proven pattern that works, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the, 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 the challenge is when people try to use something other than that, mm -hmm. it's an experiment. And when you have an experiment, in that case, you don't have a base to go back to, right? It's much like whenever you're teaching classes and you're teaching one of the things that we use and we're teaching that and and people come up with their own way of doing things mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not as successful. It's not to say there's not another way right. that's not successful. It's like, okay, well, this has kind of been proven that this works if you do this. So don't. You know, don't, don't just come up with something else and get surprised that it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I always say if, if, the, if the master's teaching principles that's proven and the student comes up with ideas and concepts that's not proven, uh, you typically, you may get good results, mm -hmm. but, but, but probably most of the time you would not get good results. And like you said, it doesn't mean that that approach may not can give greater results. It just hasn't been proven. Haven't tested time, been right. tested by time. Right. And these principles have been tested by time. Right. Okay, so we start that 21st verse. Mm -hmm. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one. Now, help me to understand what does submit mean? Well, uh, when you, when you, uh, I read somewhere, I don't know if it was in it, what I'm looking at here that when it used the Greek term, and I don't remember what it was, it did not mean in terms of a slave. It meant in terms of you honoring a position and it's a voluntary uh, act versus a required, you know, law requirement act. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about submitting, it's not because um, uh, I'm forced to do it. Right. It's a voluntary role. Right. Voluntary role. Because if 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 you don't volunteer, it's not necessarily submitting. It may be over being overpowered or something else, but not necessarily submitting. And this says one to another. Mm -hmm. This does not just simply say 
this is not just the lead in to say one individual has to do something and the other vi individual um, is scot free. It doesn't say that, but to one another. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll try to look that up. I, I did commentary. I can't put my hands on it right now. It talked about it. gave the Greek word that it refers to because you know mm -hmm. this uh, probably was written in Greek. You know, and it gave the definition of how that word submitted, what it meant in the context of, of how it was written. Okay. And so you, so you got the overall statement in the 21st verse, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, I think, is, is, is where he starts, where Paul starts the conversation, right? He starts with the wives. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so your Greek word that you may be looking for is this is? Yeah, what is that? Who I, us? <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, something like that, something like that. But what does it mean? Okay, to subordinate, reflexivity. No, that's not. Nice. I don't think that's the word that nah. I was looking at. But that's not. The okay, word. to obey, to uh, be under obedience, obedient, uh, subdue, and to to make subject to to put in subjection, under submit. Self unto submit self. Now I guess that's probably probably the key word self submit yeah. self. <coughs> that may be the, the the root word or something, but it was it, it was softer than that mm -hmm. when, when I read it. In fact, it specifically used the uh, description said it was not like a slave submitting to a master kind of mm -hmm. scenario. And uh, and then and, be, and he starts with the twenty second verse, which I think is interesting that he starts. You know, you typically would think that you're talking about the husband being a head, and he would start there, but he doesn't. He start with the wives. Okay, I like this. I like this definition: to yield to one's admonition or advice. I like that one. <laughs> yes. So it does start with the wife. Mm -hmm. It start with the wife, and um, it starts with the wife. But how many scriptures do we have telling us? I like that. You know, the husband, he got a lot of scriptures telling him. No. <laughs> okay, it starts with the wife. So Ephesians 5, 21, uh, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the God. And in the fear of God, 22nd verse, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Um, one of the things that I want to point out here is what was going on at the time. You have all of this uh, in the church, all these changes in the church. This is something new that you're introducing uh, as a way of life. Christianity impacts your entire life. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, women, there's a, there's a relationship that a wife has with her husband that she doesn't have with other men. That's why it says to your own husband. To your own mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. To your own husband. So this is not just hammering, okay, you have to be obedient, listen to everything that he says, or do everything that your husband says. This is saying that structure, that dynamic husband-wife structure has not changed, mm -hmm. and that that's a different relationship than a wife has with another person. So at this point, uh, I don't know if polygamy was practiced in, in biblical times. We don't practice polygamy today. We Christians here in the United States, we don't practice polygamy here. I can't say that it was ever advised. I can't say, you know, Solomon, whenever he had all the wives and concubines and that sort of thing, and they got him into trouble. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that it was ever advised to have multiple uh, husbands and wives. But today, as Christians, we don't now. When you start getting into the uh, divorce and that sort of thing, that's a whole different, that's a whole different yeah. Space study. that not to be addressed <laughs> is part of this teaching this week. Yes. yes. Okay, so... As unto the Lord. Why submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord? Man, that's a way to submit. Now, Well, and, and to me, again, when, when we read all of this, we have to read it with Christ as the subject and then part of the context as opposed to, because if we're not careful, you know, we get the wives and the husband relationship 
and it trumps what, what Paul is really trying to get you to, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. know, it's as unto Christ. Now, uh, now that relationship, part of that relationship is the relationship with the wives to the husband, wife, the husband to the Christ, wife to Christ. All of those things that's going on, but Christ is the hub. Mm -hmm. The husband's not the hub. The wife's not right. the hub. Right. The children's not the hub. Right. Christ is the hub. So he's right. in the center, and everything else should be around that. Exactly. Now, this is almost like the happy path. Mm -hmm. Everything going right in the, <laughs> in the relationships and in the world. This is almost the happy path. Um, there's something that you said triggered a thought, and... Go on, I'm sure it will come back. So, oh, oh, this is what it is. I'm sorry. What is it? This what is, is what, what it is. is. What is it? So as you're studying these, <laughs> as you're studying this, there are some Bibles, study Bibles, that are known to have a chauvinistic uh, lens, if you will. And um, whenever you use a study Bible, just go back. Just you can, matter of fact, you could probably Google and have people and have a comparison done from Bible to Bible. And there are all sorts of Bibles out there. There are feminist Bibles out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it will give you a, a different view of what these scriptures mean. And uh, we have to remember this King James Version Bible was written by men for men. Okay? Written by men for men. So it's not that everybody's perspective is taken into place or even presented, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah, and, and I guess this goes back to the, the comments we made earlier that this is a path, right? This is a pattern mm -hmm. that works. Mm -hmm. uh, and when people get away from the pattern, then it doesn't mean other things don't work. Right. It right. just it mean that they're not, may not be as proven. Mm -hmm. So this is um, Western cultural mm -hmm. thinking uh, you you know there's some other cultures that think differently than we think, but but this is about infusing Christ again in the culture, not disrupting right. the culture necessarily, unless it goes against God. Right. If the culture goes against God, you know you, we have to obey God rather than men. Again, Christ is the hub, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So where'd you stop? Twenty uh, fourth, I think. And the twenty fifth starts. Says husband love. Wait, 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 wait. Let's look at the twenty third a little bit. Twenty third. Okay. For, the, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. You have your colon there, and he is the savior of the body. Now, now look at really look at that. He is the savior of the body, and that, if you look at your strong concordance, that is uh, G four nine ninety. Deliverer. He is the deliverer of the body. And, you know, whenever you, I look at this passage, it's, it's a, it's almost, this is how I take it. The husband provides a certain, should provide a certain security and a certain safety and a certain, um, he should play a certain role in the family that allows the wife to, to experience, I'd say salvation. I don't want to say salvation, but you know what I mean. I would say a sense of security so she doesn't have to worry about certain things. But, but I think you make a good point. Um, when you get in this space, when you go back about wives submitting themselves to the husband, when you get into the word submit there as it's spoken, because this, this creates a dynamic that I didn't necessarily want to dive into is that this this structure works when people are walking in certain spaces. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm going to say this, that a husband doesn't have to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost for the wife to submit herself to him. Uh, but he must care for her in a way that she's willfully submitting herself. Mm -hmm. You know, so what happens, and, and I'm using the husband there in that scenario, but it also works the same way with the wife, right? Is, is, is that you don't have to be saved and feel with the Holy Ghost for this chemistry to work. Mm -hmm. It helps if if you are, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be, which means that you can have a good marriage without being saved if you follow these principles right. that's highlighted here. Right. Where we get into challenges is when one 
or one of the three, whether it be the husband, whether it be the wife, whether it be the children, are not walking or not operating in that space, then everything is like a flat tire on a car. It's not going to run as well. Mm -hmm. Don't mean it won't run. Mm -hmm. It just won't run as well. Okay. That, now looking at that, then you go to that 24th verse, and, and this is the CV. Wives should always put their husbands first as the church puts Christ first. The Amplifier says, but as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives should be subject to their husband in everything, respecting both their position as protector and their responsibility to God, to God as the head of the house. So again, if you read the King James, just like, I mean, you read, what version was that? That's the CEV. The CEV. The, the challenge with the CEV, folks, is, I don't know, it's easy to read, but it is a commentary, which means that it's giving somebody's perspective on it versus just translating the words. But I think the Amplified does a better job of explaining that than the, than the CEV did. There. Okay, so this is what I want us to recognize. Some of these scriptures are not as simple as it seems to be. It's not, it's not that black and white. Whenever we feel the need to uh, use these scriptures, let's go back and understand what these scriptures are saying. Let's understand. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> let's understand <laughs> my role. Let's understand your role. Let's understand exactly what God is telling us to do in this and not simply just take, uh, just try to use it to badger someone, mm. use it to. As an advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a constraint of some sort, let's not do that. Let's find freedom in the scriptures. Okay? Yep. All right. Now the 25th verse, is this the one? It, are these the scriptures that the wives love? Probably. Yeah, these are the ones. Okay, every every woman in, in the church, listen now, up. Now, but before you go into that, I think you were gloating a little bit because the wife only had about three scriptures and the <laughs> husband got a whole bunch of scriptures. I think you were gloating over that. You, think, you mentioned that a few minutes ago. But husbands, listen up. Go ahead. All right. I like Hus the Amplified. Uh -huh. what, what version are you read? Well, that's, that's... I think we need to read the Amplified. Now, 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 but before we go, before we go there... Um, we're talking about submitting and we're talking about uh, basically humility and all this sort of stuff. Let me give you some scriptures to go back and make part of your, make part of your study. Philippians 2, uh, 1 through 8. First Timothy 2, 7 through 15. And... First Peter 3 and 7. So we want to look at those as part of our study. Okay. Okay. That's for the wives. <laughs> That's so you're trying to balance this thing? Maybe? <laughs> actually, actually, that, that will help everybody because First Peter, let's see, First Peter 3 and 7. Let's to this, guys. And, and, and most of the wives probably already know this. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them accordingly to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Mm. So the women probably know that scripture. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, but I think, I think they may know that. But, mm -hmm. you know, if, if that's one of those conversations that if you have with love, there's good in it, but if you have it as a weapon, I'm not sure how powerful it is. Does that make sense? Because the, the scripture right before that, it says, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Yes. Calling him Lord, whose, <laughs> whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. So, you know, yeah. So you, I'm authorizing you to call me Lord. <laughs> So anyway, at any rate, <laughs> there are there you really need to study these scriptures to figure out what role you should play. And the strength in the strength of the scriptures is self. 
what can I do? You can, you can influence people, but you can't necessarily make people have a certain heart. You can't make people whatever. You may be able to inspire them, but you cannot make people. The strength of the scriptures is looking at the scriptures and internalizing them. How do I measure up against the scripture and what can I do? You know, when you say it, that, I thought about it. The, there's power in, script, in the scripture, the power in scripture. And there's a reward for finding the power and connecting to it. And by the same token, uh, there are consequences mm -hmm. of not finding that and not connecting mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to move on to the husband? Ready to move yeah, on to the yeah, husband? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amplify it. You almost have to read uh, the first. Three to get 25 yeah, through 27. Yeah. Say, husbands, love your wives. Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and gave him, himself up for her so that he might sanctify the church, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God. So in that, in return, he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be wholly set apart for God and blameless. Wow. Wow. This scripture, this, this passage of scriptures, these three scriptures, it gave us why Christ gave himself for the church. Yep. The why. Why a, a husband would go the extent that he would go to do what needs to be done for the wife. Mm -hmm. The why. That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, to present it to himself. Mm. So he went the extent of giving himself so he could present it to himself, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. So this passage of scriptures does not talk about Christ overpowering people. This passage of scripture doesn't talk about Christ demanding of a person. It's, it talks about what Christ did he loved the church so much. This is what he did to present it to himself. But, but if you look at the husband and wife relationship, it mirrors that. That the wife, if the husband, as the husband, uh, love his wife and seek the highest good for her and surround her with caring and selfish love. He did, in doing that, he creates her in this space that she then presents herself back to her husband. Now, now, that is mm, admirable. That's an admirable spot to work from. And uh, most people, my guess, with most women that, the most women who I know, <laughs> if a man put his wife on a pedestal, is you know, as Christ has the church, you know, presented, the bride presents herself in such a glorious fashion. Whenever you, whenever I read about uh, the church being a bride of Christ and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. I just think of, I don't know, just being a, just such an awesome presentation, but it's only made through him. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, mm, that's loaded. That's, that's loaded. That's deep. That's loaded. That is loaded. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a feeling that if somebody, if, if a husband and wife hears these, understand these things, and they go back through these scriptures, it's going to be a lot of conversation. Yeah, yeah. A lot of conversation. But, but you, you said something earlier. You mentioned that the scripture is, uh, I don't well, know what words you use, but it's personal. It's, mm -hmm. it's for me. It's for my, not for me to take it. And you take the scripture talks about the wives' responsibility to the husband beat you up with it. It's mm -hmm. for me to go seek what the word says about the husband's mm -hmm. responsibility to the mm -hmm. wife and the family and to Christ. So if we if we all internalize it for the value mm -hmm. and the power and the reward that we gain, mm -hmm. because all we can control is ourselves. Right, right. I've been married 40 years. It'll be 41 years in January, and I've never looked at that scripture that way. 
Of course, you know, you probably, you, you, you probably have some inclination because you think of, especially men who are in, if you have husbands who are in ministry, if you have husbands who serve as deacons, if you have husbands who serve as pastors and bishops, that sort of thing, you have some inclination that, um, that if you're there working in a church, you need to rule your household well, and that isn't necessarily with a heavy hand. Mm -hmm. And if you can't um, run your household well, then, you know, that that you do in the church is lacking. So, you know, I've considered these things throughout the years that a man in this position has to have wisdom because just because you tell a woman to do something, that means she's going to do it. And just because you, uh, because you're a man in the house, it doesn't mean everybody's going to do what you're supposed to do. But through wisdom, the family is able to respect the family is able, you're able to gain the respect and uh, provide that leadership role to the family. Mm -hmm. So you probably have some inkling, but this has, to me, this has made it so plain. And that's not all. Because when you pick up in the 28th verse, yeah, let's, yeah, we got to beat them so up some even more. Even so, husband, <laughs> stop beating them up. <laughs> even so, husband, should and are morally obligated to love their own wives as being a sense their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. So. Now, let, me go ahead, let me go ahead and read through the 30. For no one ever hated his own body, but instead he nourishes and, and protects and cherishes it just as Christ does the church because we are members of parts of his body. Now, in him loving it, nourishing it, and cherishing it, that doesn't mean that he's not... Nourishes, in, in all of that, and in sure. all of that, he is transparent. In all of that, he is... Uh, faithful and deliberate and has a standard in all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ loved the church and he doesn't let uh, everything go. You know, he, the, we still have rules, you know, we still have uh, their sins that will take us to hell. Mm -hmm. There's still, he wants us without spot or blemish. It doesn't mean because he, he uh, loves that he just lets a church do absolutely anything it wants to do, but he nourishes it. He provides that. I think it was uh, which one of those prophets that had he had to be married to the wife who was whore, uh, Hose Hosea. Hosea. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. There he offered her the best, offered her the best, cleaned her up, and uh, you know gave her whatever gifts she needed to mm -hmm. be very presentable. But then she turned back. She turned back. back. So so Jesus. Does offer us what we need. He does offer us what we need. It's up to us to take that and, and use it. So hopefully our husbands are offering us uh, things that will nourish us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're offering us words of advice uh, that will put us in favorable uh, positions, that sort of thing. If he's not, maybe he doesn't know or realize it. Yeah, and that, that well, that's one thing about it. Talking about the the uh, power and the reward is understanding that, so you can seek the right things to get to a good result. So, you, do you think most husband and wives know how they should behave? I don't think they know to the extent that's described here. No, mm -hmm. I think uh, most people just mimic. They either mimic what they've seen, mm -hmm. or they do what feels good or sounds good. Or so, they don't want to do what they've seen. Yeah. Well, my, my point <laughs> is that it's not anchored in typically the word. Right, it's anchored right. in something, either be experienced or visual or just whatever comes to them, right? This but again, all of those things, uh, I guess if they've seen, even if, if you look at something, say, say you've seen a bad marriage, say you grew up in a family with a bad marriage, and but, but you, you only saw what you saw, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you start trying to extract from that, to create something else, you still is kind of in an unknown place mm -hmm. because you don't know what went into what you saw. This could be a whole conference for the month of February. <laughs> this could be, a, I'm telling you, yeah. these mm -hmm. scriptures could be a whole conference. Yep. All right. 
And then we get to the uh, 31st verse. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined and be faithfully devoted to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. And I often tell people that, when, 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 especially when you start talking about couples, that shall, you know, is, is talking about a process, it's a future state <laughs> that you work toward. Right, right. right. Mm. Whenever I see this, a man should leave his father and mother, I don't think that necessarily means physically they have to leave, but I think he has to take on a different role. Right. Because some, some parents uh, will need care. Some parents will need, you know, whatever it is that uh, that man has to provide. But as far as what his pro father provides, now if his father is providing, has been providing him a place to, uh, as his covering, now how are you going to be a covering for someone else and your father is yet having to be a covering for you? You know, there's some things that now you have to stand as a man. Mm -hmm. You can't, you're no longer a child. You, you can't act and think and behave like a child. Now you have to operate as a, as a man, as a husband, for you to become one flesh. And I think uh, uh, you may have something. You can look up the Greek word for leave here. Mm -hmm. Because when, when, when I read it and I think about the culture of this time, uh, most of the time when a husband took on a wife, they didn't necessarily physically leave a place. Mm -hmm. because yeah. they became part of the of extension of the family that existed there. Mm -hmm. So I think we want to be cognizant of that, because when we read leave, we think extracting from a place. And I think it's talking more, as you said, it's more positional mm -hmm. than it is physical, if that makes sense. Right, right. Okay, the word leave. Okay, from the root word, uh, this actually comes from the uh, Strong Concordance G2641. It's from G2596 and G3007. To leave down, that is behind. Um, by implication, to abandon, have remaining, forsake, leave, reserve. These aren't really hard you said that some of these are really harsh <laughs> definitions, or, or we read into them. We read into them as being harsh definitions. Um, words don't always, based on our experience and whatever, words don't always have a negative uh, overtone. Sometimes we read that into it. So this is this is positional. This isn't necessarily... You have to physically leave them. Yep. Yeah, and, and I just got to thinking about the culture at that time. It's like, that's, that's different. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the 32nd verse says, This mystery of the two becoming one is great, but I'm speaking with reference to the relationship of Christ and the church. However, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife as his very own self, with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, having always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness, and the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefer him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and hold, holding him dear. Those are two scriptures, right? Those Don't you like that 33rd? <laughs> Those were that's, a lot of words. <laughs> now, that's the Amplified. That's Amplified. Yeah, it expands it for you. <laughs> that is amazing. Yep. This is a great mystery. It's a, isn't it amazing how Paul got all these mysteries revealed to him? Yep, yep. Simply amazing. But this is, that's, we're not going to go into that mm -hmm. today. Wow. Wow. Okay, uh, we you, you know we don't have time. If we dug and in, really dug into these scriptures the way um, they could be dug into, we'd be here a few days searching out these scriptures. These are just the highlights. So uh, we will take you on to the other scriptures that we have. Then we go through Ephesians six 
-hmm. one through four, four is mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Now this is parent and children. Mm -hmm. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Obey your parents in the Lord, in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment will promise, because if you dishonor them, your days will be cut short, that it may be well with them, with thee, that thou mayst live long on the earth. And ye fathers, oh my goodness, ye fathers, provoke not your children to raft, but bring them up in in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This is, this is just, this is amazing to me. Most of the time whenever I hear somebody using this scripture, that fourth one, fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in nurture and admonition of the word. They, they stop, they stop right there at the, um, they stop right there at the colon. They don't, they don't go and, but what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's it's more like, um, you know, is I hear people using this and sometimes it falls short. It almost seems like don't provide that, don't present something to them that's going to aggravate them or right. agitate right. them. And that yeah. is so not what this is saying. That's mm -hmm. so not what it's saying. We as parents, fathers as parents, have to provide guidance for them have to it's a must mm -hmm. is you know you can't you can't get around it now there's some there are times when their fathers uh are not present in a home mm -hmm. so you guys hear the clock in you the background and you, <laughs> you know it's four o'clock it's four o'clock in the evening uh, there are times that fathers are not in the home and it is so uh, even even times when mothers aren't in the home but this is speaking of fathers and we know that Mothers have a role as well. Mm -hmm. This just pulls out the importance of the father. Yep. So whenever the father's not in the home, that gives an, uh, provides an additional burden on the wife. And what's even more sad is if the husband and spouse are in the house, a uh, husband and wife are in the house, and they're going two different directions yeah. with the child. Yeah. So and, 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 and almost everybody loses in that situation. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. uh, did you want to have? Did you want to bring out something on that one? No, I'm sorry. I was just taking care of some other stuff while we were doing that. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one, CEV, because he always tells us this commentary. Parents, parents. This doesn't just simply say fathers. Parents, do not be hard on your children. Raise them properly. Teach them and instruct them about the Lord. Now, don't be hard on your children. You have to know, don't, don't break the child. Yeah, that means be unreasonable, right? Don't, I think right, that's, I think right. that's what it's referring to. But this doesn't mean let the child rule the house. Don't let the kid try to take the position of the parent. We're still parents mm -hmm. and, and we still have to um, Raise them a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, you want to pause us there? Okay. All right, so we left off on that fourth verse. Uh, one of the things that I want to say is Proverbs. Go to Proverbs. Well, we know Proverbs has a mm -hmm. lot of um, things that we can live by. It, it's... You know, it was written for the Jewish male, but there are a lot of things that <coughs> all of us can learn from and live by. But look at the 22nd, Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. And as part of this, um, these scriptures here, 22 and 6, train up your child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is one of the key scriptures that we, mm -hmm. we need to know. Children, you have to obey uh, your parents and the Lord and parents we have us we have a role that we have to play in doing the right things by our children we can't let them do any and everything and expect them to um, you know just come come up you know raving we just can't expect that you know we have sure to do the right you, thing. you called this out but let me say a little bit about that fourth verse 
on the Amplified, it talks about uh, fathers do not provoke your children. You talked about that, the anger. Do not exacerbate them to the point of resentment mm -hmm. with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or um, humiliating or abusive, nor by showing favoritism or indifference to any of them, but bring them up in tenderly and loving kindness and the discipline and instructions of the Lord. And, and it's that you got that balance right. Mm -hmm. You got to bring them up. You got to take these young people and help them and guide them to become adults. Mm -hmm. And you can't be so overzealous that they're the greatest thing since sliced bread, but you can't be overzealous where they're the worst thing in the world, right? So you right. got to find that balance right. because you create a false environment Either one of these extremes creates a false environment of which is not a reality for the child. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, whenever you provide instructions for the kids, they will typically, this is what I have seen, let me put it this way, whenever you have provided that, those um, borders, boundaries, those guides for children, they will typically at some point appreciate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what has been done for them yep. and uh, use it, you know, and further in life. Especially if it's balanced, right? They right. may not understand uh, the balance, but our objective as parents is to be balanced, right? Mm -hmm. to, to create a, as much of a balance as we can for the child so that they can grow because they're going to gravitate to something, right? But if mm -hmm. we create a balance and we become just like Christ becomes this stability for us, mm -hmm. you know, in our relationship with our spouses and kids and others, the parents have that role for the child or children until they can come into their own understanding that Christ has to then take over that place for them. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the editors wanted to emphasize this on the family. I think because that the fifth through the ninth talks about the bond servants and the masters and how, you know, the relationship there. So I think the intended purpose was to emphasize that on the family and not to dilute it by uh, looking at the other relationship. The other day, one of my uh, grandson talked about, he's, he asked a question, what if I was a black boy? And I tried to have the conversation with him. Well, you are a black male. You are a you're a boy, you're a child, you know, um, but there's nothing wrong with being black. And he's, so he started having this dialogue. He's fine. I thought blacks were, black boys were slaves. So he's beginning to hear some, um, some terminology. He's beginning to um, make connections and, uh, and identify with some things. So in teaching him the truth of slavery, you don't have to make sure that it's age appropriate. And balanced, right. And balanced, mm -hmm. and balanced. And teach them because it talks about servants and masters in the Bible. It did not permit the brutality that we typically saw as a black slave. So it's one thing to be a slave uh, that's treated the way the slave should be treated. It's something else to be a slave and have to experience the brutality that black slaves often uh, had to endure. Yeah, I think you want to, keep, as you mentioned, that you keep that in the context of when this was written, that the African American slaves had not experienced what they experienced. So you're talking about the context are different, same subject, but totally different right, context. Right. And so when you get into this, and, and also I think it's just kind of an interesting shift. Uh, haven't done this, would probably love to go back to maybe look at some of the original manuscripts because this seems like a very, it seems like a, a stretch to go from a conversation about family and then shift into bond, servant, slaves, and masters. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem to line up with the previous conversations. So I'm, I'm saying it wouldn't surprise me if, if there wasn't some for me and by me and editorial that occurred here in this, in this passage. Okay, so we do have enough in this Bible to live by. We do have enough in this Bible to live by. We know that the, uh, the King's James Bible, the 66 books that we have, is not the only Bible that's out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of us will say that yeah, I know enough in this. And, and a lot of people won't even look at the Old Testament. So they say there's enough in this New Testament for me to live by. Yeah. I believe there is, but to gain greater understanding, we have to understand we have to realize that this is not 
the only set of manuscripts out there and it is not the original right. manuscript. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. All right, so hopefully we have said something today that piques your interest in being a better family member, whatever uh, it is. Hopefully we have, uh, have not caused too much trouble between the husband and wives. <laughs> hopefully this has uh, been a good experience, an enlightening experience, and something to work from. Now what I'm interested in is Paul's position on um, how grown children should treat their parents. I'm interested in that. We saw some of that, the Corbin and that sort of thing that was in the gospel, but we haven't seen that necessarily in Paul's right. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for joining us. Once again, thank you for uh, just being here. Thank you for your comments your, uh, that you give to us. You know, thank you. We ask you to subscribe if you have not subscribed. If you have subscribed, make sure you don't hit that button again and unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but subscribe, hit that notification button, and like us if you like us. And we pray that the favor and the blessings of the Lord be upon you until we meet, come together again. God bless you.